Hello. Hello. Who are you? Uh, who am I? Who are any of us, really? Uh, I'm Chris uh, Capel. Uh, just a guy who lives in Toronto. Uh, I got fed up with uh, this dude over here and started the Rob Ford Must Go sit in um, February 12th of this year. And was there a catalyst to this? Yes. Uh, the Sochi Olympics pride flag in Broglio, um, when, you know, cities across the country, uh, across the world were flying the pride flag in solidarity with uh, LGBT athletes in Russia, with, you know, which is a horrifically oppressive society for uh, LGBT people. Uh, the pride flag was flying here at City Hall and uh, Rob Ford uh, created an uproar uh, attempting to get it taken down, uh, saying, no, the Canadian flag should be flying there, and claiming that the Canadian flag had been taken down to put the pride flag up. And, uh, was it? No. Uh, no, it was not. There is uh, an enormous flagpole out front, uh, the main flagpole, where the Canadian flag is always flying in front of City Hall, never taken down. There's a smaller courtesy flagpole uh, off to the side of City Hall, um, that flies all kinds of different flags throughout the year. It's a ceremonial sort of pull. Uh, groups can apply to have their flag fly for a few days, a week, whatever, uh, any period of time. When there's nobody scheduled for it, it flies the City of Toronto flag. And Rob Ford presumably knows this uh, because he's been coming to this building almost every day for something like 14, 15 years now. So he's seen those flag poles innumerable times. Um, anyway, so. Uh, if he wasn't lying initially and was just confused, uh, he was subsequently definitely lying because people came to him and said repeatedly, no, that's not the case. The Canadian flag was not taken down. But he persisted in claiming that it was. And uh, for me, it was just a grossly offensive, uh, horrifically sort of hateful thing to do. And it was at a point, it was at that point that his, his whole thing, his entire um, just the debacle of the previous few months, uh, back video, etc., sort of tipped over into he's actively, deliberately trying to hurt other people, like a large segment of the population uh, of Toronto, uh, of, of Toronto, which is like one of the most, if not the most, like uh, LGBT-friendly um, cities in the world. You don't do that here. You don't get to do that here. You don't have a right to do that here. And that just, I am not gay, I'm, you know, cops, but uh, I have a lot of friends who are, and it just, it hurt me physically and viscerally. It's like, I will not live in this kind of city. I will not sit by and do nothing while, you know, while this is happening, while he's trying to stir up hate deliberately. So. So you did something, and yeah. that something was? Uh, I started the sit-in. <laughs> um, I think it was February 11th. I'd been watching online. I saw there was a small group of uh, mothers and kids who came into the two-hour sit-in uh, in front of his office, right there, boom, on that spot. And uh, so they got a lot of media coverage. Uh, Rob Ford wasn't there because it was like 10 in the morning into the moon, and so he wasn't in yet. Uh, Doug Ford came by and... And Doug Ford is? Uh, Doug Ford, Rob Ford's brother, the, the, uh, the also mayor, of the, you know, just symbiotic entity that has been running the city, sort of. Uh, Doug Ford came by and was slagging on them and the media was there and anyway, and I, so I saw that and I thought that was fantastic, like just it was such a great thing to do, just be right there, you know, right in front of it, but he didn't see it because they were only there for a couple of hours, then they had to go. And I reflected on the multiple demonstrations that had taken place in Nathan Phillips Square in November, you know, hundreds of people showing up several times, like demanding that he resign, which he just blew off, ignored completely. Uh, and, you know, the pressure in, that had been put on him in the media and editorials, all the major papers calling for him to resign, various prominent, you know, politicians and citizens. And, you know, just Toronto figures calling on him to resign. It just, it just completely has no effect on him, you know, no impact. Uh, attempts to reach him through shame, attempts to, you know, reach him through anger, attempts to, you know, direct, you know, sort of outrage and frustration at him. 
nothing, just all flew right off him. So I was like, well, what if we try this? <laughs> like, what if that sit-in thing is directly in front of him every day? Just right in his line of sight. Uh, just a small, peaceful group of ordinary people who are not, you know, trying to operate on a level that he understands. Like, they're not trying to bring at him what he puts out. And what he puts out, what he and his brother put out constantly is rage, hate, anger, chaos, disruption, uh, lies, you know, this division, trying to constantly create uh, chaos. Oh, and here they are. So, uh. How's it going, sir? Depends on how you feel, this is a little documentary. Formerly? Yeah, he's uh, on a leave and currently working as a cam campaign headquarters manager for Ford's uh, election campaign. Anyway. Yet he's here today? Uh, yeah, I get, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, today is Sunday, so whatever. They don't really care about boundaries. Um, so, uh, yeah, but anyway, to have a presence in front of uh, this office that was just the opposite of Ford's. It was peaceful, inclusive, kind, open, accepting, understanding, calm, compassionate, loving, uh, and open uh, to anybody to join. And it was focused on like extended discussion and people uh, really getting to know each other and talking about the city and what they love about the city and also trying to process what the hell was happening because this has been an unprecedented situation. I mean, in the modern era of Toronto, like, we have not encountered anything like this, and we have sort of no frame of reference as a city or as citizens or residents of the city for what, how do you deal with something like this. And so <laughs> as the sitting kind of evolved, uh, like it became a large aspect of it as being just sort of this therapy almost, like it's just people talking and sharing their experiences and perspectives, and it's been really, really sort of uh, useful just in that respect. But um, anyway, yeah, so February 12th, uh, I just, I showed up, well, the night before I, I registered a domain name, uh, robfordmustgo.com, and created a Twitter account, and threw up a very basic website, and I just tweeted out of my personal account that I was doing this, and uh, invited anybody who wanted to to join me, and I showed up, I think, 1 p.m. or something, uh, on the 12th, and there was already one guy here, and the media sort of grabbed us and interviewed us, and uh, so we were talking and we both sat down and more people started showing up and did a bunch more interviews and people just kept showing up. And that was 173 days ago. And we have kept it going every day since then. How many days to go? 85. 85 until October 27th, the election. So a lot of us had initially hoped that it would be possible through an effort such as this that had not been attempted before to reach potentially some shreds of a conscience within Mr. Ford here and uh, draw him into a recognition of the fact that he really desperately needs to resign. Uh, but as the weeks went by and we learned uh, just sitting here observing, uh, having all kinds of experiences and interactions with counselors, uh, media, passers-by, Ford supporters, brief interactions with the Fords themselves and so forth, it became abundantly apparent that these guys don't have consciences. Uh, or if they do, no, they don't. <laughs> like they effectively don't. I mean, if they do, they're just so broken beyond repair. Like they essentially do not have functioning consciences. Uh, so they really don't care. Uh, they don't care about the damage they've done. They don't care about uh, the sort of generalized destruction, and chaos, and devastation they create. They thrive on it. They love it, and they don't say anything wrong with it. Um, so. Uh, the sit-in has sort of evolved to a recognition that, well, they're going to have to be defeated in the election. We lack, not having 
encountered anything like this before. We lack any sort of other mechanisms uh, to to deal with it uh, beyond that. And but ultimately, maybe that's for the best. I mean, you know, democracy. You uh, elect people. If you try them out, you see what happens. Uh, it's an ongoing experiment. Uh, sometimes it goes horrifically wrong, but. Fortunately, built into the system is a mechanism that allows uh, citizens to, if they're so inclined, uh, bring an experiment to an end and bring in a new experiment. So I'm very hopeful that um, in 85 days we will see the cessation of this particularly horrendous experiment, uh, the embarking of the city upon uh, a much, a much better uh, path. Thank you.